Hi everyone, it's good to be back with you on this Monday afternoon. Again, my name is Alexa, and I'm just going to be sharing just a little bit of an encouraging word with you today, but we'll just open in prayer real quick, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Father God, I thank you so much for this time and this opportunity that we can have to hear and receive from your word. I pray that your spirit would go forth, God. Prepare hearts, God. Make them open, Father. Make them receptive to the preaching of the gospel today, Father. I pray that every person who hears this message, Lord, I thank you that your word does not return void. I thank you that it finishes the work it was set out to do. And I thank you that we are going to take these words from your holy Bible, God, and apply them to our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so today I actually have something a little bit different for you guys. Um, I wanted to share with you um, just a really powerful sermon that I heard, and it's by Pastor S.M. Lockridge, and the sermon is titled, That's My King, Do You Know Him? And so I'm just going to kind of be reading it through for you today, and we'll, we'll just talk about it, and yeah, so let's get started. The Bible says, my king is a seven-way king. He's the king of the Jews. That's a racial king. He's the king of Israel. That's a national king. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. So he's king over all of time. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And that means, you know, you know he's already king over everything else. But if there's any other kings, he's king over those kings. He's Lord over those lords. That's my king. Well, I wonder, do you know him? David said, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. No far-seeing telescope can bring into visibility the coastline of his shoreless supply. No barrier can hinder him from pouring out his blessings. I want you to grab a hold of that today. Receive that for yourself. No barrier can hinder him from pouring out his blessings. He wants to bless you today. I promise you, he's a good God. He wants to bless you today and nothing can stop him. You just have to open your heart and receive from him. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Regardless of what you've done, there's nothing that his mercy can't reach. There's nothing that his blood can't cover. He's impartially merciful. Do you know what the word impartially means? That means that there's no picking and choosing. That means that there's no, this person's better, that person's better. It means impartial. Everyone is covered by his mercy when they choose to receive it. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He stands in the solitude of himself. Nothing ever even comes close to the majesty and the glory and the power of Jesus Christ. He stands in the solitude of himself. He's awesome. He's unique. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. I know in the, in the past few weeks, unprecedented has been a word that has been used a lot with this whole coronavirus situation. Everyone's saying, oh, this has never happened before. This is something that's so unprecedented. But the love of Jesus, the majesty of Jesus, that's what's truly unprecedented. Nothing, I mean, there, listen, there's been diseases, there's been outbreaks, you know, there's been pandemics in the past. But never, uh, never before in history and never again in the future will there ever be the man of Jesus Christ. He has existed solely in himself for eternity. God the Father, there's nothing like him that will ever become, you know, happen again in history. 
There'll be other diseases. There'll be other outbreaks. Coronavirus, yes, what it's done to our society is unprecedented. But the love of Jesus triumphs over that. He's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the supreme problem in higher criticism. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the cardinal necessity of spiritual religion. When I hear all of those things listed out, you know, literature, philosophy, higher criticism, theology, religion, those are all pursuits of, of the human mind. And so many times throughout history, people have sought to understand with their mind the things of God. But what you truly come to as a believer is you understand that the things of God will never make sense to our natural minds. We have to receive them in our spirits. And Jesus, he, he can never be understood with the natural mind because he stands so far above. The word of God says that his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We can never even begin to comprehend, to understand, to fathom the depth and the, the height and the breadth and the width of everything that God has done for us. He stands far beyond and above it all. He is so good. He's the miracle of the age. He's the superlative of everything good that you can choose to call him. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice because he never sinned. He lived a perfect life. And that's why he could be the sacrifice for us. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and he sustains. He guards and he guides. If you need sustenance today, if you need guidance today, he is the one. He is the savior. He's the king who strengthens and sustains and guards and guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the aged. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. Well, my king is the king. He's the key to knowledge. He's the wellspring to wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. You know, the Bible says he's the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. He's the gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his office is manifold. His promise is sure. His light is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy. And his burden is light. I wish I could describe him to you, but he's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. You can't get him out of your mind and you can't get him out of your hand. You can't outlive him and you can't live without him. The Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. The witnesses couldn't get their testimonies to agree. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave could not hold him. Yeah, that's my king. That's my king. Father, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. How long is that? And when you get through with all the forevers, then amen and amen. This is powerful. 
And I want to tell you today, if you don't know him, if you don't know my king, then today is the perfect day to ask him, Lord, I want to know you. And the Lord says that when we draw near to him, he, he draws near to us and he begins to reveal himself to us. He wants to be the Lord of, the, of your life. He wants to be your Prince of Peace and your King of Kings. Open your heart to him today. This is the best time. And I just want to say, you know, follow, like, follow after Jesus. When you choose to, to follow after him, like I said, he will reveal himself to you. Lord, I thank you for every person who has heard your word today, God. I thank you that their hearts received it, God. They received the seed of your word, God. And I pray that nothing would hinder that. I rebuke every, every force of the enemy that tries to come against them in the name of Jesus. I pray right now that your word would prevail in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So thanks for tuning in today, guys. Remember, like, subscribe, comment. Follow this church page. We'd love to hear from you. DM us. Send us a personal message. And make sure you tune in tomorrow for our Tuesday Devo as well. Have a great day.